it is popular, don't get me wrong, but it's one of those things where if it said AP on the dial, oh my God, it, it would, would be, be trading at right. 3x retail. Oh, Correct. And whenever I see that, where I see somebody come out with something that's so ingenious and so well made, you know, it's it, it's just a matter of time before it fully comes into its stride and, and hits. First of all, I love bracelet watches in general. Um, I'm much more a bracelet guy. So there's a couple of things that make me crazy with bad bracelets, so I'll hit those first because this doesn't have any of those. The first thing on bracelets is how it integrates to the case. Mm -hmm. um, so this particular one, I love the fact that it really looks like the bracelet is built specifically for this watch. You get a lot of watches that are strap watches that look like they made a bracelet for it. So mm -hmm. there's no taper to it. There's no like integration into the watch. So I think this bracelet is perfectly integrated. Um, it also has a super nice double deployant, so it sits really balanced on your wrist. It also has half links. Uh, why it's a big deal, but like summertime, my wrist swells up a lot, especially if you have a big, heavy watch. It needs to fit right, and if you've got it that you've got these big link adjustments, it never gets it quite right. So having the half link adjustments on there, and the last and best part of this bracelet to me is the fact that it comes right off. It's so smooth. It's so smooth. So literally, and it doesn't drop. You would think like, I'm going to lose that one day, but it doesn't. Comes right off, comes with a strap that you can adjust to it. Um, that goes right back into it and integrated. It's just perfectly balanced and I think a super underappreciated watch in general and for sure the bracelet combination. No, definitely. And I think, you know, prefacing what you said, executing a really well-made bracelet is not an easy task. And it's Correct. something that a lot of consumers don't realize how much goes into executing that really well-made bracelet. And you know, within the industry, when we see it, you're like, wow, that's genius. And it's amazing to me that it took, call it one of the Holy Trinity brands as long as it did to- It took them three, three iterations Correct. really yep. to get the bracelet To perfect. figure out the detachable bracelet. Not only detachable, but also the, the smoothness of the bracelet, the feel of the bracelet. Um, it is so much better than the original two versions Correct. that they took it to. And I love the fact that, and I don't think people understand how much engineering goes into a bracelet. No, definitely. And AP, for example, you always did have the ability to switch, yep. but you had to have different findings on the straps. Yep. Correct. And, and in addition, you had to take it somewhere to have it done. Correct. So this was that first time where you had a brand like Avashron where they gave you all three, you could do it yourself. It came with the buckles for the straps and it was, the you know, do-it-yourself thing was always the big thing because yes. like Cartier also sometimes had them and Paddock had straps that you could take off, but nobody could change the buckles by themselves. Correct. So exactly. I mean, to make it so it's integrated, all one package. It, it's perfect. And the genius. buckles are um, so easy to sw swap out as well. The DuPont has that, that little swivel just pops out. Random question, why don't more brands make halflings? I don't know. It's always <laughs> been a pet peeve of mine. I just um, thought of that. Like, why, like, could there's so many random brands that, like, could just use a little halfling, and you wonder why. Well, so, but, so Paddock does a one and a half link, mm -hmm. and they do a mm -hmm. half link. So we have a watch here on the table, which they make half links for, but for their Nautilus line, they make one and a half links. Correct. Right, so, so that makes sense. But it goes to show you again the, you got to do a little bit of engineering. You got to have some finesse, some craftsmanship in it. But it, it's interesting when you said half links, I was like, there's so many random brands that could use a, a little half link in there. And you know, another brand that probably gets no credit for having done an interchangeable bracelet was the IWC GST. Yes. You could remove it, it would slide out. Correct, that was um, one of the early ones. Exactly, and I, I, for me, it was one of the better bracelets that IWC's done, and it's not even, call it a modern era bracelet. So it shows you that just because something is current doesn't necessarily mean that it's the best of what the brand has produced. No, actually, some of those early bracelets, and I think a lot of brands got away from engineering bracelets and hand-making bracelets. Mm -hmm. Like IWC used to make some of those cool mesh bracelets and the GST bracelets you're talking about were awesome. And I feel like their modern bracelets got a little, I don't know, too commercial or mm -hmm. too common um, that they mass produced and they were just worried about cranking them out, let's Correct. be honest. Well, back in like 2015, 2016, strap watches were really in favor. Correct. And you saw that transition start taking place. Sports watches came more onto the scene. Everybody started throwing bracelets on, again, as you said, strap watches. Right. 
And I think that some of the thought and engineering was taken out in order to just get bracelets onto the watches. A favorite of mine on the table, which for me was, I think it's one of my favorite watches now. Um, so it's a Bulgari Octafinissimo in titanium. Give that to you for you to hold. And, it's an amazing uh, piece and just crazy light. Crazy nothing. light. So back in 2017, when Bulgari released this watch, it was the thinnest automatic watch in the world. So titanium case, titanium bracelet, super flexible bracelet. For me, I love that. I love a soft feeling bracelet that almost fits at the comfort level of a strap. And what hit it out of the park, I think, was that the deployant buckle actually integrates into the bracelet. So there is a recession in the underside of the bracelet for the deployant to fold into. Which is genius. I probably, so probably see So that if you look at some pictures, of these, right. hold this up, you can see that on your wrist, the actual butterfly deployant sticks up. sticks up and it digs into your skin. Yep. This, none of that. It sits completely flush. It's funny, flush, I've never even noticed that before. Completely flush in the That's bracelet. amazing. That's like, um, that's just engineering like we're talking about. Correct. And, and that's where, you know, it shows you the level of attention to detail that Bulgari had when they were releasing this watch, that every little piece was thought of and executed a certain way. Well, let's get to Q's point is they're basically a jewelry house. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you think about it. So making jewelry and engineering jewelry that it wears comfortably is what they're good at. So I think that's what they took that approach to the bracelet. It's amazing. The thing I also love about that bracelet is that bracelet integrates to that case as well as anything. You can't see where the case stops and the bracelet starts. It's, it's one piece, it looks good on a small wrist or a big wrist because of how it just yes. hugs and how um, uh, small you, the wrist are. you saying Brian has a small wrist? Uh, I'm no, saying, no, 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 but you know what though? I do, I do have a, del a delicate wrist. It's, it's all right, it's all right. Some people and, uh, are hefty and some people but I think are, are delicate or, or petite, you might say. I don't know, but he can rock it up. Svelte, svelte. Svelte is a good word, svelte, um, I, I like that. But I do think it's a testament to the watch itself. When a watch can be worn on a small wrist or a big wrist, correct? Because of the complexity of the bracelet and how well the watch itself is made, it it you know it it, it tells you something. It, it's a, it's a rare thing, and it's so interesting because I didn't think about that uh, either with how the clasp is hidden. But I'd say most people who don't like bracelet watches, it's because the butterfly is digging into them or it's just not fitting the right way or correct. like when they go around their business, it's just a little bit uncomfortable. I mean, to me, Bulgari is like my my stock to buy right now because they're pushing, pushing, pushing. The past few years, almost every Everything they've released has been like on the money or close to on the money, and like I'm really excited to see how far they push it. Yeah, I don't, yeah. I don't think one lasts, you know, more than 30 days. With no, 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 yeah, they go quick. Right. Depending on the metal, you know. And when they first started doing the watches 25 yes. years ago, they had the same thing. They got super hot and were all over the place with kind of that sports with the rubber straps, and then you know, kind of went in this 10 years of mm -hmm. not really being known for watches, and now this has come through, and it's putting them back on the map, which is amazing. Okay. Um, All right, Q. Should we go for the well, for, well, for the pattern, or do you want to go with the bright link? You, you look amped. You look ready for I'm the ready, bright I'm link. Let's ready. do it. Let's do the bright link. All right. So this, my friends, is to me um, a version of one of the best bracelets out there. The the Navi Timer Pilot bracelet, the real original to me. Uh, this is a Premier Chronograph. So it's a little bit smaller than original. This used to terrorize me when I size. In, in, in Ireland. I've been there. I, I remember just like, you know, sweating, buying people lunch because I couldn't <laughs> figure it out. And Screws like, from either side. Oh no, and then I had to go up to Mike Michaels when he used to work for us and I'd be like, listen, I want to buy you lunch. Enjoy a bottle it was of champagne. Of surgery. You were, you were oh, like, you were going into surgery. Exactly. Well, no, he's doing a jigsaw puzzle that the pieces oh, just didn't fit. God forbid, it's, it's screw falls, it's everything. <laughs> you're always sitting there looking over you oh, as no, you're doing it. The worst is when they're there staring at you. But um, it's worth all the pain because it's one of the most comfortable bracelets out there. Uh, they use either five, seven, or three link system. I'm wearing the dated hair that has the five link system. Makes it super flexible. And one of my big things I used to use when I used to sell against a lot of brands, because of that link system, everything works together and always stays stiff like that. You can find an old, a older Navi timer, 10, 15 years old, no stretch on a bracelet, where some watches, 10, 15 years old, looks like it could use a little pick me up or, right. or so. And to me, it's one of my favorite bracelets. I've sold so many and they're just like comfortable to the point. It's not a super high-end watch, but that doesn't mean they can't do things the right way. And I, I, just, I just love this bracelet. So that's why Bradley is here today, folks, because I'll always represent.
Well, it's funny because I remember when they first came out with the the five link is my favorite. I prefer the five to the seven just from an aesthetic standpoint. I agree. But to your point, the it's like kind of at an angle, but perfectly straight and and I like the, the taper. Fit, I like the taper. I like the taper. edges that cut away. I mean, it's really well engineered, and they do last forever. Yeah, no, tough to size, but to and it was me, so much better best. than the Rouleau bracelet I dealt with oh, for all those years. So speaking yeah. speaking, yeah. Of, speaking nice. of brightly <laughs> no, I'm a big fan of the bullet bracelet. I was going to say, before so, it was Rouleau, it was Bullet. <laughs> so I love the little links. I love how soft and flexible it is. So you have extraordinarily hairy arms, <laughs> which is why I know you're going to say that you don't exactly. like the... I mean, I like, didn't you're, when I wore a Rouleau bracelet. You're, you're wearing just a... Ripped them it's, out. it's a sweater, is what it is. <laughs> but, uh, but no, so, <laughs> that's why you would not like the Bullet bracelet. Uh, that's an easy uh, wax. It should come a, with a warning label. Warning, 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 exactly. warning exactly. label. Will but, cause pain every yeah. day. But, They're uh, horrible. And then they had those little gold circles that you'd always oh, drop when you were sizing. The Pilot bracelet, 10 times better. On the money. So... We've got one more watch here on the table, Paddock 5960-1A black dial. So, the, you know, the rarest variant of the watch. You know, I think that of, of bracelets that Paddock Fleet makes, I'm wearing a Paddock 5980. So I had to wear, you know, a bracelet watch yeah, for the bracelet, bracelet show. Watch, so, you know, the Nautilus bracelet is probably the most recognizable bracelet, you know, that they make. Without a doubt. A, a mixture of high polish, and Matt, you know, one of the, I'd say, telltale signs of these bracelets is simply that it doesn't crunch all the way down when you hold it. Um, you know, they stay, they stay firm. Yep. And, you know, and it sort of shows you how well they're engineered. Um, but Paddock doesn't make a lot of bracelets. No, and they're not known for bracelets. And they're, they're much more known for straps. And the thing that I find interesting about this one is this was a strap watch mm -hmm. that they put a bracelet on and did a great job. Mm -hmm. I mean, it really looks like it's part of the case, and I think it it adapts to the bracelet perfectly, which shocks me. Now, it's the same bracelet that they utilize on some of their world times. Yep. They've used it on the 5270. It's so, like 26, 50, exactly. So you, so you see it across the lines, and you know, obviously here it is in steel. They make a half link for the watch, which I think is obviously important to me. Very yes, important in terms of, in terms of sizing. <laughs> But uh, one of the ingenious features that they added to the 5270 slash one, which you would think you can just pop the bracelet off and put it on a strap and wear both, that is not the case. Right. So they integrated the, pushing push right the pusher the mechanism into the bracelet so that you can push it through the bracelet, the top of the bracelet, and then it'll activate everything within the movement. So which is, which is pretty... And it's think, really nicely genius. hidden as well. When you look at it, like you, you really don't know what's going on unless somebody shows you where the pusher is. It's like very like spelt design, as you would say. Oh, I didn't believe. So when I, I originally thought that you could just take the bracelet off and then somebody told me, no, that's not the case. Like there's these things that jut out from, from case, inside. Right, and I'm exactly. like, I'm like, that can't be the case. So, <laughs> so you're wrong. So you so, it, I'm like, you're hundred <laughs> percent wrong. And then I Googled it and right away, I'm like I was hundred percent wrong. So, which I love know, it. The other thing I love happens, about this bracelet you know is the, the links themselves mm -hmm. are actually kind of curved out, so you get this play of light off of it, off the polished surfaces that, again, just pops to me. And I've always loved, I mean, back to the 5085 when they did kind of mm -hmm. that steel sport watch on a bracelet. But to me, this is just a great bracelet combination, and to have one in steel um, is something they hadn't done for a, lot of to a long time. No, yeah. to me, it, it, it truly feels like jewelry. And when I, I first saw, uh, I think, a 50, 40, 5146 on World Time, which was this, uh, when I was working at a boutique, and I tried it on, I was like, this is like the best bracelet ever. And they don't do it rarely on any of their watches. So I think because there's such limited quantities of bracelets being made, this is truly being handmade in that jewelry fashion. So just something about how it feels on the wrist, how it looks when light hits it, to me, it's a perfect watch. If, if I had unlimited funds, I could see myself just buying all the paddocks on a bracelet and win one every day of the week and being a very, very happy guy. I just love it.